You know, it should have been mine too. Um, I used to golf at the Elks quite a bit, and um, it just things got busy a couple of years ago when I quit, and I should go back to that. Amen. Before I call roll, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight, including those people who are attending remotely and those who are watching on Channel 14 or streaming live. As noted at the top of the agenda, the governor has issued an executive order in March that allows commission members to participate remotely. Uh, for those in attendance tonight, we have set up the room in <coughs> to meet CDC recommended distancing guidelines for the, from the executive order from the governor. The city has also made several accommodations for the public to provide comments on the agenda items. Uh, with that, I'd like to call the meeting to order for the Planning and Zoning Commission, May 17th, with a roll call, please. Becker. McMahon. Here. O'Flaherty. Here. Pena Graham. Here. Right. Here. Chair Maxwell. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, with that, I'd like to move to see if there's a, a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. So moved. So we move to right. Second. Seconded by O'Flaherty. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Um, with the review of the approval of the minutes, uh, if there are any additions or deletions, please uh, make them known now. Otherwise, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. I move to accept the minutes from the previous meeting as submitted. Moved by McMahon. Second. Second by Wright. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Um, this is the public participation porn, <coughs> excuse me, portion of the meeting. If there is anyone that wishes to speak to anything that is not on the agenda this evening, uh, please step forward, state your name and your address. If not, we'll move on to new business. Um, we have a petition by the City of DeKalb on text amendments to Article 7.06. No, point uh, wrong agenda. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm grabbing the wrong one. Bear with me. I should quit taking notes on the old ones. <laughs> scrolling, scrolling. <clears throat> oh, now I grab it. Sorry. Uh, public hearing. Uh, petition by 440 LLC requesting approval of the special use permit to allow dwelling units on top of the floors of the buildings located at 400 East Hillcrest Drive and 444 East Hillcrest Drive. Um, with, that, <coughs> with that, I'll ask for a report from the city. And uh, if there's anyone speaking, wishing to speak to this, you may step forward now, state your name and address, please. Thrown off course. Uh, Chuck Shepard, 2400 Coltonville Road, Sycamore address, right between DeKalb and Sycamore. Uh, had, uh, we were on Buena Vista for 30 years. Um, is this a point where I just rattle on here a little bit? Uh, mm -hmm. Chuck Shepard owned Shepard Construction, been in business since the uh, early 70s. Came out, grew up in uh, the suburbs, came out to NIU. One of those people that just stayed here that we always hoped that NIU would, would uh, do that for us. And my wife was same, grew up in the suburbs and stayed, been married 40 years, had two kids who went off to school and then have come back and grandchildren that are in, in the neighborhood also. So life is good. Um, the property that we're talking about tonight, the 400-444, I have an excellent tenant base, most of whom reside in DeKalb and Sycamore. However, I only have 50% of the building full. I bought the building in 2011. Lynn Battellan, who was a, or is a physical therapist and started in business, I built, I had a building north, just north of Resource Bank on Bethany Road. She moved in there. 
She expanded her business two different times and needed more space. That kind of precipitated the reason that I bought the building at 444. It, I bought it in an extremely distressed state. Uh, I've spent uh, considerable sums of money to put new rubber roofs on that are 40 year roofs, new parking lots, all uh, torn out and repaved, all uh, new siding on the buildings, and really brought the buildings up to date every time I would have a new tenant, I would gut the space, the 80s type of design, and get it to the current you know, look of, of any tenants that wanted it. We now uh, stand, or right now I'm paying approximately 25% of my gross income for property taxes where it should be maybe one third of that number. It just, you cannot survive on 50% occupancy. And that's why I come to you before you this evening to request that I be able to put some apartment units on the top, top floors to uh, even out and, and uh, have better occupancy rates. Denise Wyman, I think she had some uh, backup material in your uh, folders, the commercial real estate broker. They have brought a few tenants to me. They're just not the small tenants are available. Just, they're just not around or, or, or there's so much competition. Um, Linda Tillis, who is a residential broker specialist, has assured me that there's a waiting list for potential tenants for this type of product. She's uh, with Century 21 Elsner. We have, uh, are proposing putting in 17 units, a mix of two bedroom and one bedroom, primarily one bedroom. We have plenty, plenty of parking, approximately 133 parking stalls when under uh, DeKalb City existing regulations. We are not asking for any exceptions to those. We are, would only be required 89. Um, the, as far as public utilities necessary to operate, we have plenty of water service into the building. We have uh, plenty of sewer into the building. We have plenty of electrical into the building. We have plenty of gas. I have fiber optic we ran for some of the commercial tenants and uh, Comcast cable is also in the building. So I'm here asking that we um, could put a set of apartments up there and I don't know if it, he, he's, I wasn't paying attention, we were flipping through them. It's really like a park-like setting. You know, you're on that top floor of each of those buildings and the, the building that is to the west. You look down the river, you can see the engineering school and uh, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, there had been a little bit of concern about the parking, I guess, on some of the backup. We notified within 250 feet of all the property owners as far as uh, number of space parking and snow removal. We're not changing, you know, I mean, we're going to put the snow like we just did. You know, I mean, this last winter was a lot of snow and we pushed it down towards the retention pond and we remained having a full, full parking available. Um, I think that's all I have to, to add to it. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Um, anyone else? Yeah, I'll just go through the uh, report uh, oh, cool. that was in your packets. Um, as Mr. Shepard mentioned, uh, his request, a location. So the site there is about four and a half acres. Mm -hmm. It's zone like commercial. In that district, uh, dwelling units are allowed as a special use when they're above the ground floor. Uh, so they are allowed in the upper floors. It requires a special use, uh, which the uh, applicant uh, submitted a petition for. Uh, we set the hearing, notified property owners within 250 feet. Um, there's a total of 17 apartment units, uh, 14 one-bedroom units and three two-bedroom units uh, split between the two buildings. Uh, and the smaller 400 building, um, that's the one here. There'll be seven one-bedroom apartment units and uh, one two-bedroom unit with about 800 to 900 square feet of floor size respectively on those two. Uh, the larger 444 building, that's up near the corner. That will have seven one-bedroom units and two uh, two bedroom units, floor sizes about 675 to 975 square feet. In the supporting doc, uh, summary information provided by the petitioner, he's indicated uh, rents will vary from about $950 to $1,150 per month. Uh, the four plans were in your packet uh, there. I went through those two a little bit earlier uh, for the uh, 
440 building and then the 400 building shown here. As Mr. Shepard mentioned, he bought the uh, properties, or the, it was constructed in the uh, 80s, the two buildings. Uh, Mr. Shepard purchased in 2011, did a lot of improvements to the property inside and out. Uh, occupancy rates uh, hovering around the 50 to 60 percent, so uh, adaptive reuse, uh, requesting to put apartments on the upper floors. So uh, we did get some feedback from uh, Denise Wyman, RVG Commercial in DeKalb very well-known commercial realtor indicating there's an over, uh, uh, there's a lot of office space available in the area due to, particularly with COVID guidelines, a lot of people working from home. So the inventory for available office units is high. So that kind of makes sense in terms of having a struggle to kind of rent out office space. So, and Mr. Shepard also got some feedback from a, a residential real estate person indicating there'd be a demand for this type of apartment units in the DeKalb area. Uh, so there is a demand here for this type of product. Uh, the surrounding area, um, you know, is a mix. Across the street is um, duplex units, a single family to the east, St. Mary's Cemetery to the south, you got the Kushwaki River, apartments just across the river and various commercial uses as you go um, further west on Hillcrest Drive. So it does fit in with the surrounding area. Um, Parking was mentioned. There are 133 spaces on the site, including seven handicapped spaces. The number required is 89, so there's abundance of parking there. There's plenty of parking on the site. <clears throat> and the parking requirements based on the number of units, the type of bedrooms, and then the uh, remaining anticipated office space, which would be about 18,000. Uh, so they have uh, plenty of parking on the site. Um, one of the conditions we're making, and the petitioners agreed, uh, this, there's seven handicapped spaces, about five of them don't have the appropriate signage there, so I will, we're adding a recommending condition that prior to any occupancy of the dwelling unit that the handicapped spaces be brought into compliance with the state accessibility code and also the municipal code of the, for DeKalb, and he's agreed to that. Um, findings of fact for special use, it meets all the requirements of the Light Commercial District. The proposed apartments uh, fits in with the surrounding area. It will not be detrimental to the value of properties in the surrounding area. It fits in in terms of the uses. There's other apartments in the area just to the west and also duplexes uh, north of the property. There's adequate parking. Our city engineers looked at uh, this and indicated um, there's adequate uh, access into the site is adequate for the apartments. The impact will be very minimal with additional apartments. Again, these apartments were in areas where there was previous office space, so they're not adding any additional building to this, any new parking areas. Um, it's all within the existing space. Have adequate utilities for the site, adequate parking, um, and it fits into the area. It's uh, allow a very prominent intersection in the city um, to adaptive, to have adaptive reuse for the upper floors, so it will continue to thrive <clears throat> and generate property taxes and actually increase over time with that. So we're re heavily recommending approval of this. For public input, we did get uh, some emails, uh, some correspondence uh, prior to the hearing, uh, and those are in your packet. Uh, we received a citizen response form from Steve and Rhonda Rasmussen of 809 Woodlawn Drive in indicating support of the approval. Uh, Woodlawn Drive is the uh, single family area. This is a street up here, Woodlawn Drive. So they indicated support. We got a couple emails, one from Alyssa Hoffman. They own the duplex units, her and her husband, at 49, 413, and 417, 419 East Hillcrest. Those are up in this area here. Uh, there's some questions, concerns about uh, traffic, parking, and noise. I did respond to those regarding uh, the traffic, that it'll be very minimal, if any, additional traffic. The roadways are adequate in the area. There's parking. There's extra parking on the property. And the noise, there'll be no additional noise beyond what exists there right now. So they, uh, she thanked me for the response. We also received an email from Kurt Harrelson. Owns a duplex actually at the corner of Sycamore Road and Hillcrest right there. Some of the same questions regarding traffic, parking, and snow storage, and uh, Mr. Shepard responded <clears> that <throat> there's plenty of area to store the snow. It will not block traffic. Uh, the adequate parking there and the roadway network around there is adequate uh, for the additional apartments. So I have a sample motion prepared that does approve the uh, 
the aerial here, we do have, which is shown here, that has the parking counts on there just to document the number of extra spaces they have on the site. And with the two conditions, there'll be a max of 17 apartment units and then the requirement that the handicapped spaces be brought into uh, compliance with our code prior to any occupancy of any of those units. Okay, now that I've got my rhythm back um, at this portion, we would open it up to anybody from the public that would like to speak to this topic. If not, I will close the public hearing and open it up to questions from the commission. Um, I'd like to ask, um, were there any considerations to convert any of the current office space into residential space that you have? Why don't you get up, Chuck, and yeah, you can answer that, yeah. Well, that's, that's why I'm here tonight. I'm, I'm converting the second floors, which was commercial, and converting that to the apartment units. Oh, to the building on top, no? No, this, there's no additional to the yeah, building. They're taking the office space oh, and adding dwelling units. Great. Yeah, converting okay. it to dwelling well, units. Well, I over it. I thought that right. at first. <laughs> that, that, that's what You're not alone. Heard before. Um, your anticipated uh, uh, renters, are you anticipating uh, professionals, student yeah. population, not families? Not student population, professionals, and probably my age group, you know, people that are, say, moving out of, you know, their single family homes and, you know, in a transitional, transitional period in their lives. So, yeah, no, we're not talking about having parties or anything. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty dull, actually. <laughs> That's it for me. Um, Mr. Shepard, just out of curiosity, uh, obviously this has met all the ADA requirements previous to that because of the office space. Is there an elevator in that building? Yes, okay. there's hydraulic elevator in the uh, 444, what we always call the big building, mm -hmm. and there's a platform elevator in the uh, little building. And I actually, I have uh, a couple of proposals. I've built all the resource banks and we put elevators in them. And I have a proposal as far as possibly replacing that or making it a little bit larger. It's a what they call platform lift now. We might go to a Lula elevator, which is a, the next step up, more, or a little bit more sophisticated. So okay. to answer your question, yes, they are ADA. Okay. They're uh, yearly inspected by the state of Illinois, and you know I have on both lifts. Okay, thank you. Will there be any outside changes to the building, Chuck, or is it all gonna be interior? Just all interior. Are these apartments you're thinking about, will they be furnished or unfurnished? Don't know the answer to that. Don't, you know, I, I guess I, I'll have to defer um, probably to uh, Linda Tillis on that. Uh, it might do it as a mix or, or get, say, two, two units uh, built out and, and see what the, the requirements are. Or possibly one of the buildings we would have that would have furnished <coughs> and, and one might not be furnished. Do you have any plans for, I know you have enough parking over there, but um, assigned spots for the tenants, that the tenants would park in these spots, leaving the, in front of Walsh's building, spots open for Walsh customers in front of the uh, uh, I guess therapeutics. I had not thought that through, but we're gonna have a, a key system so that you know people can't wander the halls and, and that okay. sort of thing. That's good. Is it going to be just one parking spot per tent per apartment, or are they going to get two? Because I know there's one bedroom and there's two bedrooms that you're proposing. Well, that that's set up by code. That's already set up there. Yeah. Okay. Are yeah. they going to have stickers or? Excuse me. Stickers, you know, when you have to park there. We. Permission? I, I hope than... not. To, I hope not to have to do that. Um, quite frankly, we've had a little bit of issue with the folks across the street parking on, in our parking rather than us the, being parking over there. So. I hope not to have to do that, but I'm very diligent um, as far as having cars towed. We actually had a little bit of a uh, situation on the residential to the east where they were doing some uh, things where we had to have the police involved and I, had, I aggressively um, had cars towed just so that they would not, I wouldn't be the place mm -hmm. to make exchanges. So yeah, I mean, we will definitely be very diligent in, in watching it. Any other questions? I have one. Sorry. Okay. Just out of curiosity, trying to create revenue here in the city, have you considered making condos as opposed to apartments? 
I had not. Um, originally, the project when it was built back in 80 or 84 and 88, it was actually the condominium potential for the commercial. And only one person, uh, Daryl Voss of State Farm, was the only one that availed himself of that. So I guess the answer is no, I had not. Yeah. Okay. Just curious because I think that would yeah, it becomes be quite a, a legal less right. no, situation. It does. it does, but it just I, yeah. I think money for the city, taxes. Oh well, I pay plenty. Of, you know, I pay plenty of taxes. You don't have to worry no, about no, that. no. I'm talking about <laughs> if you make kind them into feeling. condos. If you make them into condos, those people become taxpayers as opposed to renters. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Well, in essence, they are a taxpayer because I'm paying taxes and yeah, and they're but paying they also rent. have more vested when they're condominium owners as opposed to renters. Okay. So I know the difference between renters and condos. I'm a landlord myself, so okay. they have more um, at stake because they're part of the community. Um, you know, homeowners. Right. I'm a realtor as well. So okay. Just, yeah. All right. So <laughs> just putting it out there. Yeah. No, I guess I had not considered it. Okay. Anyone else? If there are no other questions. Um, I will ask for a motion to approve. It seems like a good, it seems like the way the city seems to be going, you know, with uh, all of Pappas's developments and he's doing commercial on the first floor and he's doing <coughs> residential apartments up there. It seems to fit where the is, I mean, you have Hillcrest Place Apartments right next to it and you have, so I think, I think it's going to be a good use of the property. You know, it's unfortunate that our economic situation doesn't have a country companies that needs 12 offices, 14 offices, and I'm sure that you've done your homework that you don't see that coming in the near future. So I think it's it's the best you can hope for in this situation. Well, it's, it's a shame that um, the, the commercial aspect of it has, and everyone's been hit hard with it, but small businesses in particular. Um, and I, I'm gonna guess that this is probably not the first time we're gonna see a proposal like this uh, in the next couple of years, because uh, my genius idea years ago when the mall started failing was to turn them into retirement communities with the CVS in the bottom. And <clears throat> But unfortunately, repurposing property these days is going to become a lot more common, and so I, I perfectly understand the rationale for it. I can make a motion. Okay. Right. Based on the submitted petition, uh, testimony presented, and finding of fact, I move the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to the City Council approval of a special use permit to allow dwelling dwelling units uh, above the ground floor for the buildings at 400 East Hillcrest Drive and 4 444 East Hillcrest Drive, subject to the aerial image uh, site plan dated 5-13-21, labeled as Exhibit A to the staff report and, the subject, and subject to the following conditions. One, uh, there shall be no more than 17 apartment units on the subject site and two, all handicapped parking spaces and signage on site shall be brought into compliance with the Illinois Accessibility Code and Municipal Code prior to occupancy of any dwelling unit. So motion by Mr. Wright. I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. McMahon. All in favor say aye. Let's get a roll, oh, call. roll call. Okay, I'm sorry. Can I get a roll call, please? Becker. McMahon. Yes. O'Flaherty. Yes. Pena Graham. Yes. Wright. Yes. Maxwell. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you all and best of success. <clears throat> With that, we'll move to reports from the city. Uh, next meeting is scheduled is June 7th. We will have one hearing, um, which you'll get a email in the next few days. Uh, T-Mobile, who's located on top of the Taylor Street Plaza building on 507 East Taylor. U.S. Seller just did a special use for that. Uh, they're upgrading their equipment. They're expanding the footprint and adding more antennas, so it's a little bit beyond. They're going to have to amend their ordinance that was approved a few years ago for that. So we'll have the hearing on June 7th for that. And also, this start initial discussions on the comprehensive plan update. I'll provide a little background on the plan, uh, the sub area plans we've approved since then, a little uh, how we're going to approach uh, the update and kind of a rough schedule as we go forward in the next uh, months and into next year as we go through the comp plan update. Um, 
at the last council meeting, or the April 26th meeting, um, not their last one, but the council did approve uh, first and second reading the amendments to the barbed wire fencing that did go through the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, so that's all I had, a little non-commission stuff, uh, the travel in, demo is complete on that. Also the Harbor Freight tools in the old Aldi looking to have a soft opening. They're looking at May 25th, uh, that date may change, but for a soft opening and then uh, mid-June for their official opening. Great. That's all, thanks. All right, thank you. <clears throat> if there's nothing else, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Motion by O'Flaherty. Second. Seconded by Wright. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.